So these are just the graphs and uh, examples and some concepts, notations regarding graphs. But um, when we represent a graph, we need to do this. I mean, we want to represent a social network, a road network. We want to feed it to the computer. How do we represent? How do we specify a graph? Okay, what um, the different ways? Um, well, we're going to talk about three representations. They have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Okay, the first two, the so-called adjacency matrix and adjacency list representation of graphs, in some sense, is a more classical way to represent graphs and the more standard, you probably would see this two uh, in te typical textbooks. Okay, although um, uh, the last one, you can think it's a more efficient implementation of adjacency list. Okay, so it is uh, has similar idea of adjacency list, but then make it a, a bit more practical uh, some of the uh, 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 software package have used this to represent graphs, okay? All right. So the first one is the adjacency matrix representation. What is this? Let's say that we have a graph where the nodes are V0, V1 to Vn minus one. So we have N nodes in the graph, okay? N is a cardinality of the node set V, okay? What is a graph? A graph basically is a node set with some pair of nodes, some edges, right? So I just need to represent both of them, okay? And in particular, I need to tell who and who are connected, right? So those are the edges. I need to um, uh, record, I need to store which node is connected to what, okay? You can simply use this, restore this in a matrix form. This is so-called adjacency matrix. And adjacency matrix basically have um, N columns and N rows. And each of the columns correspond to one node. Okay, so this is a graph node one, two, three, four, five. And this is a graph node one, two, three, four, five. Okay, what do you do? Whenever you have an edge between VI and VJ, okay, then you put an entry one there. So here's an example. So I have an edge between one and two. That means that I go to the entry one and two, and I put a one there. Okay, so this corresponds to this edge, okay? But note that in this example, I have an undirected graph. So if I have an edge one, two, that also means I have an edge two, one, right? So I also put two, one, one, because this is the same edge. So I have a, I basically have an edge between node one and the two. So I have two positions to record that. So both of this means the same thing. Okay, next, I have an edge between one and five. That means that I need to put, so for this one, this edge, I need to put one and five, that's here, and also one and five here. So this two corresponding to this edge. Okay, and you can continue. So the edge two, five, means that I have two, five, or five, two, five. So this two represented this edge, two, five, and so on, okay? In other words, you go to this matrix, you take any spot, let's say we take this spot, oops. If I take this spot, this is the entry, the matrix entry five, three, uh, sorry, three, five. Okay, and this entry, we asked, is an edge between V3 and V5? We go to the graph, V3 and V5 doesn't have an edge, that's why this is zero. But if you go to say V4 and V5, We said there is an edge between four and five. Yes, there's one. That's why this is one. Okay. So you go to every entry that's corresponding to every entry here corresponding to the column and the row ID corresponding to the ID index of your graph nodes. Okay. And then you just check is an edge between them. If yes, you put one there, otherwise it's zero. Okay. So this is called adjacency matrix because this is a matrix, n by n matrix, n is the size of the node. This is a matrix that encodes the adjacency information, whether a node is adjacent to another node. Adjacent means that they're connected by an edge. 
Okay, so this is an example for undirected graph. Okay, and if I look at a directed graph, it's the same thing because the only things now, um, the you, you when, whenever you look at an entries, for example, here we have that we if I go to the entry one two, okay, so I go to adjacency one two, I go to the graph. Indeed, I have an edge going from one to two, so that's why I have one here, okay. But if you consider adjacency entry to one, okay, which is this entry, well, there's no edge going from two to one. That's why this is zero while this is one. So now you see that these two entries are no longer the same because the edge, even though they both corresponding to the same pair of nodes, one and two, okay, because the edge has direction, okay? So that's the difference. Um, other than that, you, it's, a, it's the same definition. You just go to each entry, you check whether there's an edge there or not, okay? Now, because of this, note that for undirected graph, the adjacency matrix is always symmetric. A matrix is symmetric if intuitively you fold it along this diagonal and you get the same. In other words, a matrix is symmetric if Aij equal to Aji for any Ij. Okay, so this is a symmetric matrix. So adjacency matrix for an undirected graph is symmetric, okay? Um, because we know that Aij and Aji both encode the same edge between Vi and Vj. Okay, so if you have an edge for one, you have an edge for the other, for the undirected graph. Okay, but for direct the graph, this is no longer symmetric. For example, here it may may not be the same as here. So here we note that A12, sorry, in this case, adjacency one two is not the same as the adjacency matrix to one anymore, okay? Because the, the edge, this has direction, okay? So as a consequence, using the adjacency matrix representation of a graph, if the graph is undirected, then the adjacent matrix is symmetric matrix. Um, if it's not, is it directed, then it may not be symmetric, okay? So that's a distinction that we want to remember, okay? All right, so the adjacency matrix remembers all the so an, another way to look at this is that if you pick an arbitrary node, let's say we pick three, okay? And you look at the corresponding row here, okay? What do I have here? Well, this basically, this, this row corresponding to uh, 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 node three basically encode all the outgoing edges from node three, right? So from three, I can go to one. That's basically all the successor. So from three, I can go to one. And from three, I can go to two. So I have an entry to one and a two, two. And I cannot go to four, so I don't have, um, I don't have an entry to three, I don't have an entry to four, okay? So any row in code, row of say VI in code successor of VI, okay? All the other nodes connected by, the, by an outgoing, edges from VI, okay? And if you take a column, say let's take the column two. So here, what is this meaning of this? All the ones are basically all the edges that are coming into two. So for example, for two, I have an edge coming from one and I have an edge coming from three. And we see that there's an entry at one and entry at three, this other one. Okay, because in this column, it basically encode. So column, which is of um, the ice column, um, encodes predecessor of VI. Okay, so it encodes, um, you can easily get successor and the predecessor information from adjacency matrix representation. Okay, it's a very convenient representation. Okay, complexity. Okay, how good is this uh, representation? Well, first we notice that the size to store this graph in this way using adjacency matrix is the V square. V is uh, the number of nodes square because I need a matrix of size V by V. 
Okay, it doesn't matter how many edges you have. This is the size we have to allocate to this matrix, and I need the v square entries. Okay, and how about the different um, operations? Okay, so for example, a common operation we have is the edge query. We ask, given the graph, we ask, is then the edge is v i and v j connected by an edge? Is the edge v i v j in the in this um, uh, in my graph? Okay, well, for this, what do I do once I give you the adjacency matrix? Well, by definition, you just go to the adjacent matrix, you check the entry, because if they're connected, then this is one, um, you just return this. Okay, if this entry is one, then there, there's an edge. If this entry is zero, then there's no edge, that's it. Okay, and this only takes constant time, because all you need to do is just go to, so this takes constant time. You just go to the entry in the, in the matrix and the return, that's it, okay? But you can also ask the degree query. You said that, um, what is the degree? Or maybe say, what is the outer degree of vertex VI? Okay, now in adjacency matrix, what do you need to do? We note that um, basically, um, the, the, for example, the outer degree is basically all the, the, the number of successor. You have to then go to, if you want to know the degree of three, you have to go to the corresponding column uh, row and then count how many ones you have inside. That's our degree for direct graph. For undirect graph, that's the degree of three because this connect all the ones that has an edge connected to three, okay? So, but the time it takes is that you have to go to the corresponding column or row and then count the number of ones inside, okay? So that takes time order of V time, okay? So I summarize them here, okay? Um, for edge query is very efficient, but then for degree, so here by degree, it's um, it's a degree for undirected. But out degree by default for directed graph, okay? You have to go to the corresponding uh, row and then uh, uh, count the total number of ones inside, which can be done by using the sum because otherwise zero, the sum is basically the number of ones you have. And this unfortunately takes um, time linear to the number of nodes, okay? So now when I say linear, I have to specify whether it's linear to the number of nodes or linear to the number of edges because the number of nodes and edges are different, okay? While to do edge query is very efficient, only constant time. Um, but so basically what we said is that the advantage of using this um, uh, adjacency matrix of representation of graphs is that it can support very efficient edge queries, only take constant time. It's also very conceptually very simple and easy. You just need to make a matrix and the entry in the matrix representing whether you have an edge with the corresponding ver ver between the corresponding vertices or not, okay? So it's very easy. And because of this uh, matrix view, it's also easy to man manipulate using linear algebra, okay? So for example, it turns out that if you take the square of this matrix, you multiply the matrix with itself, A times A, then the entry of this one actually can give you information about the number of um, a path of length two between two nodes. Okay, how many ways you can connect the VI to VJ through a path with length two, basically. Okay, number of, uh, actually this means edges, sorry, paths of length two connected. So you, you can actually have this um, linear algebra manipulation of the adjacent matrices. Okay, so you're gonna have one homework just to um, ask you to um, uh, show this. Okay, the disadvantage is that it takes huge amount of space, okay? Because it doesn't matter how your, what your graph really look like, even if your graph has no edge inside whatsoever, you still have to allocate this V square space, which take a lot of um, memory, okay? Um, so for example, in real life, actually graphs often tend to be sparse with far fewer number of edges than V square number of edges, okay? They're typically not complete. Most edges are missing. So think about Facebook, most of people don't know each other, okay? So between any two nodes in general, there's not an edge connecting them. Okay, while um, it, as of now, Facebook roughly have 2.7 billion users. If you have to allocate a V by V um, uh, memory, then that basically is a tremendous of um, size. In fact, we cannot afford at all. 
Okay, um, but fortunately, in real life, the Facebook, despite that it have so many users, the number of edges is only kind of linear to the number of users. We have, as of now, about 400 um, uh, billion users, much smaller than this um, 2 billion square. Okay, so in other words, this is not very realistic in practice for real graphs because the number of the size, could, the number of nodes could be large, and we don't need all the space for edges because most of the time, the most of the entry in this matrix are empty, so there are no edges. Okay, so it's not very e efficient that way. All right, now, and the problem we just saw is that adjacent to the matrix doesn't matter what we do; we have to. Uh, allocate one bit for each of the v square potential edge between any two nodes, v and v j. Okay, so to reduce the size, and even when there's no edge between them, we still have to allocate this bit there. Okay, so um, the idea to reduce this space complexity is that what if we only store the real edges in the graph? We only have a kind of um, a bit there when there's an edge between the two nodes. Okay, and this gives us the so-called adjacency list representation. Okay, so here in adjacency list, here's an example for the direct graph. Okay, every vertex now maintain a list. Okay, so what is this list? This list basically stores that who are the neighbors of me. Remember neighbor or successors. Remember that's basically who can can I reach through an edge. Okay, so for example, node one can only reach two, okay? So I remember who's my neighbor. I have only one neighbor, which is two, okay? For node three, for example, I can reach one and two. So one and two are my neighbors. I have two outgoing edges. So in node three, I store a list which stores one and two, okay? And node two, I can only reach four. So from two, I only store my neighbor, which is four. And at node four, okay, I can either soon edge reach myself or going to three. So at four, I store a list. My neighbors are four and three. Okay. So in other words, I first, what is adjacent to list? I first have an array, one entry for each of the nodes. So in general, this is v1 till vn. You have n nodes. And then each of the array has another list stored here where which only stores the neighbors of vi okay so you have five neighbors then this list consists of five elements okay and um so that's it okay questions all right now let's think about it this is our business list representation then for each of the entry here, uh, for, for each of the, um, uh, uh, for each node, what is the size of this adjacency list? Well, I only store my neighbors. So the size of the adjacency list for th this node is simply the degree or the out degree for direct graph, okay? So the number of neighbors, okay? So this is what we have. So for the node vertex VI, its adjacency list has size, which is degree of uh, um, of this node or our degree, the number of neighbors. Okay, so the size is basically the number of neighbors of VI. Okay, so what is the total space of space complexity of the uh, adjacency list representation then? Well, um, first we need an array to store, at least we need the one entry to um, this our, we have an array, one for each of the vertex, okay? Now, for each of the vertex, we have a list hanging here, and the size is the degree. In other words, this for the ice vertex, the adjacency list size is the degree of VI. And I need to sum it up for all of them. So this is the, total size of adjacency lists at all nodes in V. Okay, because each of them has uh, uh, the list size as degree of that node. And now we need to take the sum of all of them. And what is this? 
What is sum of all the degree? Well, remember, the sum of all degree is basically two times the number of edges for undirect graph or the number of edges for direct graph. Okay, so in other words, this is either 2e for undirected graphs or e for directed graphs. As such, the total space is asymptotically V plus E. That's the total space. Okay, so I'm going to summarize it here. Every edge, um, there's another way to see that um, uh, the, the, the sum of a degree equal to 2E. So every edge will be stored twice in the adjacency list if the graph is undirected, once for each of the endpoint of it. Okay, and the once if the graph is directed. So the total space complexity is V plus E, okay? Now, um, why do I write it in terms of V plus E? Why not just the order of, why not? Why don't I write this? Or just the size of V? Well, this is because that in this case, we don't know which one's bigger, okay? So we now have two sizes to measure the input, both the number of nodes and number of edges. Okay, and we in general don't know which one's bigger. Okay, if your graph has no edge, then V is bigger, right? Uh, but if your graph has is complete, then E become quadratic in V, then V is bigger. In general, we don't know which one's bigger, so I have to write both of them here. Okay, so this is different from uh, earlier examples where usually we just have one input size, but here for graph, you have two ways to measure the, um, your, your input consists both of the nodes and the edges. So when you talk about complexity, unless you know the relation between the two in general, you have to write both because you don't know which one is bigger, who dominates, okay? All right. Okay, so uh, time complex, so that's the space. This is the space complexity. Now for the time complexity of operations. Now, um, if, um, to, just to go to the list of the neighbors for a specific vertex that take only constant time, okay? And to check whether the edge is in the graph or not. Now, what do we need to do? How much time do we need? Let's look at an example. Let's say I'm asking, is edge three, four in them? So if I ask, is V3, V4 inside your graph? If I, this is the question I'm asking, what do you do? You said, okay, if there's an edge, then V4 is the neighbor of V3, right? That means that I need to first go to the adjacency list of V3. Then I need to check whether V4 is inside or not. Okay, because if V4 is connected to V3, then it should be in the adjacency list of V3. So I go there and then I have to go through the list to check, to search for it, the same as our search problem long time ago, right? So I have to search as that in this case, since it's represented as a list, I have to go through each of them to see whether four is inside or not. And it turned out I have to go to the end of it and figure out in this case, four is not there, okay? So in other words, the time it takes, actually I have to scan through the adjacency list of V3 in this case to answer this. So it's a degree of V3, okay? In general, when you answer this um, edge query, then you have to um, spend the time which is the degree of the starting node endpoint of that edge, okay? In the worst case, degree can be linear. So that's why we have to, we do not know, we have to write this order of V here in the worst case, okay? And um, you can also do degree query, which is what is the out degree, the number of neighbors of VI, or um, in this case, um, you can just store it for the size of the uh, list. So that only take constant time, okay? But note that, for direct the graph, if I want to check in degree, unfortunately, this adjacency list represent my neighbors, namely who are my successors, okay? So I do not, so from, from the adjacency list of three, I know what are the edges going out of me. That's, that's what the adjacency list is recording, recording your successors, but it doesn't record who comes to you, okay? So to get in degree, then you unfortunately has to go through the entire 
uh, in tau, uh, adjacent the list that you look for it. So it's very expensive. Okay. All right. That's why we separate the out degree and the in degree. Okay, because uh, here the reason it takes so much time is that you have to go through all the entries to see whether the edge is there or not. Okay. Okay, but just to summarize, the space speaking now the adjacent list has a v plus e, but the um to the edge query unfortunately takes the degree of this node, which can be in the worst case order of v. Okay, but to check whether the degree of a node is very efficient. Okay. And let me also point out that um, the space complexity for adjacent list is asymptotically optimal. Why? Because your graph is described by the set of list of nodes and the list of edges. Okay. So you need at least this much time to store a graph. Otherwise, there will be information missing, not a not stored, right? So this is the best asymptotically. This is basically linear to the size of the graph. That's the um, um, uh, best you can do, okay? And adjacency list representation is also easy to, to query for the number of uh, neighbors, okay? But it is not, it is slow to do edge queries. And also because you lose that nice matrix structure, you cannot easily do things like a, a square and so on, okay? All right. Okay, so so far we look at the adjacency matrix and the adjacency list, and they both have their own pros and cons. Adjacency matrix is a it's a very simple representation, and it's very easy to check whether an edge is inside or not. You just go to the corresponding entry. Okay, the problem is that the space can be large. Okay, adjacency list is efficient in space, optimal in space. Okay, size of v plus e, but uh, to check whether an edge is inside or not, this becomes slow. Okay. And the natural question is that can we take advantage of both and have some which is both efficient in space, but still with efficient edge queries. Okay, and um, that basically we're going to implement using the hash table idea we introduced. Okay, and why? Why would a hash table help? Okay, so if you think about adjacency list representation. Okay, here each one has store its neighbors in the list. Okay, so this is adjacency. So if this is VI, then this is um, adjacency list of VI. Okay, we stored it in the list that stores the neighbor of VI. Okay, why is the edge query slow? Because if I want to know VI and VJ, is in E, is V and V J an edge in E? If I want to do this edge query, I basically need to ask, this is equivalent to, is V J in the adjacency list of V I, right? This is basically I'm asking, is V J a neighbor of V I? A neighbor of V I. In other words, is it stored in the adjacency list of VI, okay? But because we represent this adjacency list using a list or an array, uh, which in Python, you have to go through the one by one to find it. And this, this is where we get to this um, uh, uh, order of a degree of the um, nodes uh, complexity behavior, okay? And you, you think about it, you say, hey, but this is just a membership query, right? We're just asking, is something in the set, right? And we talk about that um, membership query, that's what you have, and maybe all, then it's very efficient to use hash table to do that on average, okay? But this, as, um, that is expected the behavior, okay? So in other words, if I use the hash table to represent this adjacency list, then to check whether an element is inside or not, and if essentially it takes time, which is proportional to the so-called load factor, which is the number of size of the hash table, um, number of uh, elements you store inside divided over size of the hash table. And you make your load factor to be constant. And then we think you can basically do the membership query in um, constant time in expectation, okay, under some assumption. Okay, so empirically, you can consider that I can do membership query using um, only a constant time, using hash table, and that's the idea. Okay, so instead of using a list here to represent adjacency list, 
let's change this. Use a hash table to represent the adjacency list at each node. Okay, that's it. That's the change. Okay. Now you can do the same actually for so here in the adjacency list, we usually first have an array, one entry for each of the vertex, and then there you hand the adjacency list. Okay. You can further change this one to another hash table. It's not necessary, but can do, you can do that. Why? Because um, when you have an array, usually assume that your vertices are ordered 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay. What if I give you a graph where the vertices are, you know, A, B, C, D, something which is non numerical? Okay. So now it's very easy to use hash table to hash it into. Uh, so it, it, it's essentially the same thing, but this now allow you to uh, index your uh, graph nodes using not, not numbers. Okay. So, all right. So that's all we, um, uh, what all we do. We change both the inner list, the adjacent list, and the outer array to hash tables. So it's a hash table of hash table. Okay. So really, this implementation is hash table of hash table implementation. Okay. Now, why do we call this dictionary set? Well, uh, in Python, okay. Um, the inner hash table, I can just use the standard set data structure in Python that's implemented using a, a hash table, okay, which, which can offer you efficient uh, membership query, okay. The outer array, I also need a hash table, and then in Python, I'm going to use dictionary, the dict data structure, because um, that also allow you not only hash a bunch of elements, each one can also have um, more, you have uh, more information uh, at each record. So here, because for each of the element, I also want to attach adjacency list. Okay. So this is just the implementation. Okay. So that's why we call this dictionary of sets representation. Okay. In Python. Okay. So to summarize, okay. Um, in, in Python, um, we basically change. So like in this case, now the outer array, we're going to use the dictionary, which maps a set which is v0, v1, v2, v3 to store this, okay? And for each of them, we now have another using a set representation, which is another adjacency list. And for v0, now I remember its neighbors, which is v2, v1, use another, this is implemented using set. So this is implemented using dictionary. v1 remembers who its neighbor, which is v2. Again, stored in set in Python. V2 doesn't have anybody. So this is empty set. You just put a none there. V3 has one neighbor. V3 is stored using set. So all of this, each of them is represented using set while the outer ones represent using dictionary. Okay, that's how we represent it. Okay, now if you think about the complexity of this, so first the space complexity, um, I just erased it, but uh, the space complexity, you need a dictionary. You need a dictionary of size V to store all the, all the nodes, right? And for each of the node, you need another set total size of sets. Oops. store the adjacency list of all nodes. Okay, so you have n sets, one for each of the adjacent list of, of each node, okay? And the, their total size is only the total degree of them, which is proportional to the number of edges, okay? So space speaking, we're still very economical. We still only use the necessary space, okay? What is the time complexity? Now, because we're using hash table, so this is really under assumptions and then the expected running time, okay? Under assumption that we have good hash function, the load factor is low and so on, okay? But now the edge query, we just do a membership query, we said is J in the adjacency list of I, okay? And that can be done, we just 
go to the corresponding set storing adjacent to list of all i and then do a membership query that is order one uh, expect a time and the degree of i which is just return the length of this which both of the which can be done in constant time okay but note that the time complexity here is really expected time and it holds under a bunch of assumptions. So in practice, they may you may not achieve this. Okay, um, and also when you use the hash table, there always overhead. You know, setting up the hash table, maintaining the hash, choosing the hash function, and so on. Okay, so um, nevertheless, this is uh, in practice. This is pretty uh, practical. Um, you can use the hash table implementation of the graphs, which in essence is really a better implementation of adjacency list representation. Okay, so it's not it's not something new. This is just a better way to implement the idea behind adjacency list representation. Okay, and um, um, we have already pro provided you uh, the Python implementation for this um, uh, dictionary of set implementation, okay? So you can uh, import that or you can download it from the course website to play with it yourself, okay? And that's all for today. <laughs>